So we're out here today, we're going to be doing some trimming on these crazy apple trees. Uh, the previous owner let these kind of just grow the way they were going to grow. And uh, from my understanding, this is absolutely incorrect. So we've got a lot of stuff that we need to trim. A lot of branches that grow downwards we got to trim off. Um, all the vertical shoots we need to trim off. Basically, you only want lateral shoots coming off the sides that are strong enough to support the apples. And you really don't want zigzagging branches like this because uh, they fight for their nutrients in the sunlight. This is probably the biggest one we've got. I won't be able to reach the top. There's too many uh, vertical shoots up there that I'll be missing out on uh, for this trim. But um, I may be able to get the ladder out if I can clear up enough of this to reach up there. Yesterday I came out here and trimmed up this tree here as good as I could without the ladder. So this here is a vertical, or I'm sorry, a, a lateral branch coming off. And this one here was actually growing up and curved and came back down and all kinds of stuff. And you can see all the uh, shoots that I cut off here. And these were actually growing straight up. So very similar to what you see on that trunk over there. Um, in theory, this branch here is supposed to come off because it's straight up, but because it's far, far enough away from the main stem, I'm going to let this one continue on up and become the main because the previous owner had cut off here. So really what you want is you only want one path going straight up. And that's according to all the research in our local uh, universities and such. So we're going to go ahead and get this one trimmed down and see where we're at. But all this right here, this is what was removed from it. Doesn't look like much, but there is actually quite a bit there. Uh, the, this stuff over here is actually a pin cherry tree that was growing in between this apple tree. So we trim that out to give that some sunlight. We'll see what happens with it this spring. So. Here we go. Alright, so we trimmed up this one pretty good. We weren't able to reach all the way up to the top, but uh, we're going to try and get some more, possibly. It's about 70 degrees outside today, and it's supposed to snow tomorrow. <laughs> so, we shall see what happens overnight. Here's all the branches we took down from these two trees. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more sunlight penetration. Actually, I know we will, but hopefully that produces um, maybe less fruit, but better quality fruit. And normally each tree puts off probably a couple hundred apples, but um, they're real small in size and they're not very healthy. And they never really ripen up, so they stay on the tree and end up being deer food. This one here is a, I don't know if you can see it against the backdrop here, but this is an apple tree as well that I showed you earlier. It's got a branch here and a branch here. And normally you only want the one, but there might be two in there. Two actual uh, apple trees because there was a pin cherry tree right in the center of it, which is right here. Um, that's what this is here. So we cut that out. Hopefully that'll take some of the shade away from this one and this will start to produce. But. Uh, that's what we got going on for some of our outdoor projects during this quarantine time. Stay at home orders, blah, blah, blah. Um, stuck home with the kids for the rest of the year. And it's only April. One of the kiddos got out here and raked our cul-de-sac here. We're going to be putting in an in-ground garden here. We're going to see how that goes. Um, get up a little closer from post to post it's 10 feet so we're gonna go post out and post out um, four foot section so right down the center of that post out 20 feet out 20 feet and then we're gonna have a two foot section on the center to allow you to walk down okay 
So it's going to allow you to walk down. I may divide the four foot sections to allow us uh, access across as well. So maybe at 10 feet we'll do an intersection there. And it's going to take up this little space that's in here. The um, reason for that is because this is the only area that we have besides the front yard, which we're not going to destroy, um, that gets full sun. This side is shaded by all these big trees. We'd like to put um, a garden in there, but I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to put our fruit trees in here. We're going to have the vegetables and in-ground garden over here. This is a nice fragrant lilac tree, so we're going to leave it. On the front side of this post where the rocks are, we're going to put in some more milkweed and, and some other flowers in here that attract the bees. We're going to keep this whole area bee friendly. Back in the back we have a boiler that smokes. Um, and we, I don't want to put the bees next to that because bees naturally do not like smoke so that would just be bad uh, bees wouldn't thrive over there um, eventually we do want to put make this whole area kind of a garden for bees and butterflies um, we do want to put in a hive somewhere but we haven't located exactly where we're hoping to get this stuff knocked down these pine trees and stuff in the back and get the bees back in there but for now that's kind of what we're at that's uh, hopefully our summer project get this going while we're under quarantine get some dirt in there and uh, see how things turn out all right well thanks for checking in stay tuned and please like and subscribe on to the next